Hi, and welcome to Highbrow Lowbrow. I'm your host, Sean. With me here is Ron Sensei. Each week, we get together to discuss a highly acclaimed, well-regarded film alongside a popular blockbuster. Basically, an artsy-fartsy film versus a mindless good time. Since we're all stuck at home during this quarantine time, we're hoping you spend some time with us watching some interesting movies. So, Sean, how are you coping with all this quarantine bullshit? Uh... I've been trying to figure out my life, and I'm still currently also still trying to figure out my life. Um, trying to make my way in this Hollywood landscape, um, and now I'm trying to make my way in the online landscape of Hollywood still. It's a very interesting time indeed, but just like Littlefinger said, chaos is a ladder. Yeah, I do agree that, um, you know, it's a weird subject to dive into right now. But there is opportunity there for people to grow and to see what new things develop, even in this time of sort of chaos and anarchy. Of course, our hearts go out to everyone who has been affected negatively by this. But even in chaos, can you still keep a positive mindset and go for good goals? So I don't know. Try to stay positive. Try to work through things because we're all in it together, except when you're not and you're out for each other. So... This episode, we are going to be discussing a little bit of a, a left field here. Uh, we thought about doing something a little bit different. Uh, hence, we're doing musicals. First up is a film. I have no idea how you pronounce this thing. Young Girls of Rockford. Young Girls? No, sorry. Young Girls of Rockford. Directed by Jacques Demi and with music by Michel Legrand, the young girls of Rochefort is two sisters leave their small seaside town of Rochefort in search of romance. Hired as carnival singers, one falls for an American musician while the other must search for her ideal partner. So a little bit of context, we, we, we both went in blind on this. Uh, what made you pick this one? All right, so um, I was looking around for an uh, interesting or new musical that was you know provided some sort of challenge for me in terms of like a highbrow pick um, i've seen umbrellas of sherberg uh the other film directed by um jacques demi and uh, i thought that was really interesting it didn't really flow my bible but i was while i was looking for films this one really sort of stood out to me it was very popular and then i found this clip with uh, gene kelly in it and i was like oh okay i'm all in for this one because uh gene kelly is fucking magic and i was really excited to see it so what did you think how did you feel about this one it's a very very boring story but really because of the boring story the musical uh pieces made it watchable believe it or not <laughs> i watched it because of the the scores there's a there's so much honesty in in the characterization that because that's what it is right like when they perform uh the musical uh pieces it's really kind of like the uh anecdotal uh exposition of the character you can do it in a novel but you can't do it in a film but you can do it in a musical piece and that's what they do and, and that's what i found very very alluring with this one um it made me stick around because of the musical pieces i mean it is pure musical pieces i didn't dislike the story i thought i mean obviously the story is sort of flimsy i i, I, would, I would agree with that but um the musical pieces are like fucking out of this world it's insane it's like next level it's like top of the top cream of the crop legit ass musical performance like to the next level, to it, it breaks out those charts because whatever you have in terms of like, I, I don't, I don't, I feel like there's no other movie that really compares to how excellent, excellently harmonized and well executed this film is. Like all the elements spark together and coalesce in such a way, the rhythms, the beats, the singing matches with the with the music so well, and they glide together. They 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 fit like such beautiful interlocking pieces, and then the staging and the choreography blend so well together. There's 
shapes and um, things created. Um, the composition is impeccable. The colors are impeccable. Um, it, it, it's so crafted, so crafted. I, there is, I think people have talked about, there's some sense of human imperfection with some judders, some slight misperformances, but I think that- They didn't have that Ronin camera. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no smooth, stabilized cameras, but that's fine because it did make it feel human at times. It did add a little bit of an extra human element because not everything was like exactly perfect, but you can really get the sense of how much this was crafted because it's like butter. It's like everything flows so well together. Now, in terms of being cheesy, right, um, there's so much you can do, right? There's a lot of tropes mm -hmm. and a lot of like, cliches around and the reason why they become tropes and cliches is because of the execution right like this one yes they they're not afraid to be cheesy in your face because they know the execution is masterful uh there's there's a lot of this classic narrative uh instrument of the characters not meeting each other this mm. guy comes in, he goes out, the girl comes in, and then she goes away, he comes back in, she's not there, he goes back out, she comes back in. Th there's a lot of that missed opportunity, and it's not anything different than anything you've ever seen. Uh, the narrative arcs are not anything grand, or the risks are not high. Uh, nonetheless, you, you will be glued into it, and that's the magic to yeah. me. That, that is the main attraction for this film, is that magic. So those are our thoughts on The Young Girls of Rochefer. Uh, next up, we'll be talking about Anna and the Apocalypse. Anna and the Apocalypse is a 2017 British Christmas zombie musical film based on a BAFTA-nominated short zombie musical. So, Ron, what did you think of Anna and the Apocalypse? Why did you choose this film? We're both going in blind into this thing. Uh, we chose a genre musical. I was going to do South Park, but then I was like, okay, well, that's too easy for a lowbrow. I was like, I was like trying to look around and see what's going on. Um, and then I saw Anna and the Apocalypse, and um, it was uh, very highly rated good reviews so i was like okay well let's yeah. go watch it the zombies and you know very interesting very interesting concept that's how i ended up um picking the film but uh, anyway sean what would you think about it before i go into my review sure um i i enjoyed uh, uh anna and the apocalypse i thought it was a very fun film i think both pieces right zombie film musical they're like fine as is, right? Like they're, it's a fine musical, it's a fine zombie film, but not much more than fine. But the sum of the parts is greater than the holes. When you put them together, I think it actually succeeds as a pretty decent film if you put zombie and musical and then blending those elements together and sort of succeeding in combining those two. I, I think it makes, it makes a decent musical and makes a decent zombie film. You, you have to stick to your guns. You have to stick to one thing. Um, in contrast to the girls of uh, Rockford, they stuck with the whole narrative arc of love. And love is the ultimate rule, the ultimate advocate of anything. Love is the only thing that matters. Here in the beginning, um, the, the premise is that they're gonna break away. I want to break away from this society. From this I wanna, town, yeah. I'm a, I want to break away from this uh, town, from my life, blah, blah, blah. But it went into many different arcs. It met, went into many different things and it was not concentrated enough. Was it breaking away or was it not having a Hollywood ending, which is what we're gonna go back to is the British pessimism that a lot of people talk about. I also generally tend to agree with, with Ron. Um, you know, you, you get the sort of sense from Anna that she's trying to break away and she's always sort of breaking away, you know, or that's her like main thrust of her character. Um, but how she really does that, 
I don't know, you know, the because the... you don't have a choice in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Everything is everything. Every time you just you got to get away. E- from everything's whatever. gone to shit. You don't have a uh, a clear choice. So the choices come from what you do within the apocalypse yeah. of what happens, right? So I don't know, like. It, I mean, they didn't really materialize whatever theme they were trying to uh, put in the beginning, uh, such that you follow it. Like the the big headmaster guy is just the big bad headmaster guy, uh, and of... he can't even perform. I, I'm sorry, you know, I wanted like a Lion King Scar performance yeah. out of him. I thought he was gonna be Scar, but he was so lame. I I, I thought he couldn't even sing. Um, I felt... he, he was despicable. Yeah, they set him up correctly, but the, at the end of it, I'm like, okay, well, how did he get the dad, who's a burly guy and, and who looked like he yeah. can punch you in the face? How did he strap him? How did he put him in that chair? Yeah, there are characters that start out as one perspective. The boyfriend, right? The boyfriend is a character that starts off as like sort of a douchey character, and he sort of you know comes around towards the end. Which is like a nice touch. He was kind of like one of the characters that you can kind of like get get back, you know, like, oh, wow, this guy is kind of yeah. different. Another missed opportunity is that what's what's one of the best uh, MTVs in history? Michael Jackson's Thriller, right? What happens in Thriller, well, you have that narrative, the whole thing, he's taking the girl out and he becomes a monster in the end, but in the middle of it, what happens? The zombies dance with him. I was expecting a big ensemble, a bit, you know, like a, a very kind of a good choreography. Uh, it never really amounted to anything. It, it, didn't, it didn't come. I will say I feel like I did enjoy the movie a little bit more than Ron did. I I thought it was very fun. Uh, the, even though the musical wasn't super great, I did think it was a very, you know, fun executed musical where you could see that everyone sort of had fun making this. Everyone had fun with the idea of zombies. The elements sort of play well together. I, I think it comes together relatively decently. It's nothing, nothing anything that will like blow your mind away or anything. But I, it, it is a infinitely watchable movie. You can pop it into any sort of friend group and be like, let's check out Anna and the Apocalypse. And you could put it on the background and everyone would, would sort of have a good time checking it out. I feel like as a stage production, it would have worked in terms of the cinematic uh, experience. Again, it's not a bad movie, but it falls, falls short of uh, what it could have been. Stay tuned to find out which one we ended up liking more. Well, Sean, I have to give it to you. Uh, highbrow wins this time. I am going with Girls of uh, Rockford. <laughs> yes, I would have Rockford. to say... Rockford. 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 Um, I, yeah, obviously I agree with you. Um, I, I felt like uh, Anna in the Apocalypse was sort of um, put up against like the pinnacle of musicals, like probably one of the best musicals ever made. And so... It's hard to compare. I, I felt like we sort of did a disservice to End of the Apocalypse because we put it up against like one of the toughest competitors I've ever seen in terms of the musical. Absolutely, pattern. yeah. So those are our thoughts on Anna and the Apocalypse and the Young Girls of Rock Fur. Be sure to tune in next time when we try to find out who was right, Sean or Ron. Cheers on our empty bottles. Mm-hmm.